welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to do a group test of rugged USB drives. I always carry at least one of these in my pocket and for many years my drive of choice has been a Corsair Flash Voyager. However, as I needed to get some more, I decided to purchase a range of alternatives so I could test them out, put them through their paces and discover which one is best. So, here we have all of our drives on test, all of which are USB 3.0 devices. However, some of them are labelled as USB 3.0 and others as USB 3.1 Gen 1. And this is because in 2013, USB 3.0 was rebranded as USB 3.1 Gen 1, and indeed in early 2019, it was rebranded again as USB 3.2 Gen 1. Now, personally, I don't think that USB Implementers Forum has the Thanos power to erase an existing standard from history. And so, as far as I'm concerned, these are all USB 3.0 devices based on the first USB 3.0 standard. So, what exactly have we got here? Well, our first drive is this one, which is a 16GB Corsair Flash Voyager, and this costs to $9.99 or £11.48. And it claims to be a water resistant and also vibration resistant and shock resistant. Next, we've got this, a 16GB Transcend Jet Flash 810, which costs $7.99 or £9.09. And this similarly claims to be water shock and dust resistant, and indeed down here it claims it's been a drop tested to military standards. Third on our list, we have one of these, a Gorilla Drive from EP Holdings. And this really ups the ante in terms of ruggedness. It claims to be a pressure or impact resistant up to 250 psi, and it claims to be water resistant up to 65 feet. Now, sadly, I couldn't find a UK supplier for the Gorilla Drive, so I had to import this one from the United States, where it cost a $15.36. And I would note this is a 32 gigabyte drive, whilst all the other drives on test here are 16 gigabytes. And I know it's not ideal to have different capacities under the same test conditions, but this is the lowest uh, capacity you can get for a Gorilla Drive. Life isn't perfect, so we'll have to live with that. Finally, our last drive is this one, a Corsair Flash Survivor Stealth, which as you can see is a very bulky USB drive, and this 16 gigabyte model costs $17.99 or £14.99, and again it claims to be a drop resistant and vibration resistant, as well as water resistant, up to a depth of 200 meters. Well, it's now time for me to open everything up, which I'll do nice and quickly so we can take a closer look at our drives. And I think the first thing we notice is that all of these are capped drives. They aren't like this drive here, they're not sliders. I've never understood USB sliding drives because all the contacts in the USB drive are inside the plug, so when we slide that back inside, there's no protection of the contacts whatsoever. What is the point of these sliding drives? Anyway, returning to the drives we have here, uh, the first two of them are drives with a rubber body and a rubber cap, the Corsair Voyager and the Transcend Jet Flasher 810. So let's take a closer look at these. This is the Corsair Flash Voyager, a drive I've been using for a great many years. The only potential problem with this is although it's got the nice rubber body which does protect the drive very well, the cap comes off quite easily, sometimes a bit too easily. And it was for that reason I was particularly interested to look at our second drive, the, the Transcend Jet Flash 810, because again it's a, a rubber bodied drive. Rubber bodied drives don't tend to wear holes in your pocket, which is a, a good thing. I wonder if the cap is any, any better. In fact, no, the cap is also seems to come off relatively easily. And it goes back on again if I can get it on. Now let's compare that to the Gorilla Drive. The Gorilla Drive is not a rubber bodied drive. This is a rugged drive in a, a TPU hard plastic, which seems to be very tough. And in fact, it's even got a metal ring on the end of it. And the cap here is very, very, very firmly put on. That cap is not going to get lost, I assure you. And in fact, it actually clicks back in place. This is a really tough drive. I've read really great things about the Gorilla Drives. I'll be interested to test that out. But for the ultimate in ruggedness, potentially, it would be this drive here, the uh, Corsair Stealth Survivor Drive. And uh, this is an aluminium body. You can get these either with a black painted aluminium body or just the, uh, the silver colored metal aluminium. I happen to get the black one. 
And uh, this is an unusual USB design, isn't it? This actually unscrews from, I think, that end there. If we just keep going like that, eventually we'll get in. And uh, there we are, the drive is inside there. And there's even little rubber O-rings there to seal things up. So this is a very, very uh, solid drive. How do we get it back together? There we are, screws down and down and down and down and down and down and down. There's no doubt that's going to be a very rugged drive. So uh, there we are, there's our drives in terms of how they're put together. They all seem uh, pretty rugged, but I think before I test out how rugged they are, we'll first test out their performance. Right, I've now plugged in our first drive, the Corsair Voyager, and I'm going to use Crystal Dismark to run some speed tests. So I'll uh, kick off the Crystal Dismark like that, and as you can see, the Corsair drive will now chase through the tests, and then I'll run Crystal Disk Mark for the Jet Flash 810, for the Gorilla Drive, and for the Corsair Flash Survivor. And here are the results. And as you can see, you get four sets of results from Crystal Disk Mark, but the main one we're concerned with here is the sequential read and write tests at the top. The tests below that are random read write tests using multiple threads simultaneously on lots of small files. That's more likely to be irrelevant if you're testing out an SSD or hard drive you might be running an operating system or programs from. So here we'll just focus on that top line, the sequential read-write tests. And if we summarize those in this table here and put them in order of the drive's results, as you can see, the Gorilla Drive clearly comes out way on top in both the read and write tests, followed at some distance behind that by the Corsair Flash Voyager, then the Corsair Survivor, the two Corsair drives so close it might just be the actual tolerance of the test here. And after that, we get the Transcend Jet Flash. So there we are. There's some tests with a well-respected benchmarking tool, Crystal Diskmark. However, as you'll know if you're used to watching videos on this channel, I do like to do my own real-world tests. And so now what I'm going to do is to copy all of these files in this folder, which comprise 14 files totaling two gigabytes. I'm going to copy these files to each of the drives in turn to do a write test and then do a read test. And so let's join our little race. And they're off. Windows finally puts up all the copy requesters. They will copy information. And you may have seen horse racing. You may have seen motor racing, chicken racing. This is USB drive racing. It will apparently be an Olympic sport in Japan in, in 2020. Anyway, enough of that. What is going on? Well, as we can see, three of the drives here started off very well and then dropped down in terms of their data rate. They must have filled a cache. But the jet flash seems to be maintaining a consistent data rate. Very interesting result. Let's uh, go forward a bit in time till we get towards the first finish. And here we are with uh, less than 10% to go on both the Jet Flash and the Gorilla Drive. Yes, it's going to be the Jet Flash is going to win, which is very interesting, isn't it? Seeing what we saw on the Crystal Disk Mark test, closely followed by the Gorilla Drive, 104.2 seconds versus 107.4. And then we'll have to wait a bit longer, I think, for the Corsair Drives to finish. And here we are coming towards the end, the uh, Corsair Flash Voyager is clearly going to be a third in the race set. There we are at, um, what, 206.8 seconds. And if we just uh, speed on forward again, there we are. The Corsair Survivor comes in at 235.2 seconds. So clearly the Transcend Jet Flash is winning this with the Gorilla Drive very close behind. So let's switch across to a read test, which will clearly be a lot faster and uh, here we go on the retest. Again, Windows will give us the requesters in a second. There they are. All oh, this is a sprint compared to the previous marathon, isn't it? And clearly the Gorilla Drive looks like it's going to win. Oh, it's coming up to the race. And yes, 11.5 seconds. Then very close at the top there. Is it going to be Jet Flash? Is it going to be a Corsair? Which one's it going to be? Wow, we have a dead heat. The Voyager just sped up a little bit towards the end. And finally, the Survivor comes in at 18.6 seconds. So there we are. We've seen, I think, consistently through these tests that my choice here would be the Gorilla Drive has performed very well indeed, although the Jet Flash had that very good sustained write performance. But this is only part of the picture. These are rugged drives, so I think we should now see how rugged they really are. Right, I've now ventured forth into the big wide world of outside with all the uh, incumbent noise and things that that uh, 
necessarily involves because I wanted to test things out using a concrete down here. I wanted to do a drop test and uh, if I stand up you'll notice that uh, I've set things up so I've got about a metre between uh, here and the ground. So if I take these drives from my pocket, obvious distance they'd fall from, drop them down onto concrete. There's the uh, survivor. Here is a Voyager. It'll probably bounce. It did. And let's try the uh, Gorilla Drive. And also another bounce there. The uh, Jet Flash also will bounce. Let's try that again for a proper test. And there we are. I've dropped them all three times for good measure. So let's go back inside and uh, take a closer look at the results. And here we are back on the workbench where the drives, they're not looking uh, too worse for wear actually. That the only obvious damage is to the uh, Corsair Survivor. At the end you can see a few little chips into the aluminium and the paint there and indeed I think the same thing on the end of uh, this end as well down there. But uh, other than that the drives are just puts up a bit of dust, a bit of dirt and of course that's, that's not a problem. It gives us an opportunity to try out a uh, water resistance test. And our drives went off screen at that point, didn't they? But here they are. They're now under about uh, four inches of water. That'll be cleaning them up a bit, won't it? And uh, this is a reasonable test. This is a sort of test of what happens to the drives if they're maybe uh, dropped into a, a puddle or something like that. So that's, I think, given them a good uh, washout. Let's go and see what uh, that has done to uh, their performance. Let's see if the uh, drives have actually got wet inside. And here are the drives. I've taken them all and uh, basically dried them off and then removed the caps and I can report from that that the Survivor is absolutely dry inside. There's no way any water has got inside here through the, the seal at the top and the Gorilla Drive, there's no water got through to the uh, connector at the end, although there's a tiny bit on the other side of the seal which means nothing's got through to the connector. That's also all right. However, on the Transcend Jet Flash, as you can clearly see here, there is some water ingress which has gone all the way down to the connector. That's not good. And also on the uh, Corsair Flash Voyager, we have got some water ingress, which again is not good. You can see I can actually squeeze water out there. That's clearly under the connector at the top. That is not a very good result for the Corsair. So at the end of these tests, my conclusion is that uh, these two drives, the uh, Jet Flash and the Corsair Voyager, they're certainly water resistant. And I'm sure that these two drives will uh, dry out if I leave them in the air and cover it overnight and they'll work perfectly well. But these are not waterproof drives. Whereas these drives here, the Gorilla Drive and the Corsair Survivor, these are clearly waterproof drives. There's good evidence from the test here that water is not likely to get inside these two drives. So, here we are at the end of the video and you'll be pleased to hear that overnight I dried out the Jet Flash and Voyager drives and all the drives have tested out well this morning. They're all working absolutely fine. They've all survived that rugged test. So, as my final conclusion, I guess there's two things I'd note. One is that uh, this drive here, the uh, Gorilla Drive, is a very, very good rugged drive. It came out very well in the speed test. It clearly is properly waterproof, very rugged. I'm very impressed with the Gorilla Drive. I just wish there was a supplier in the UK. I'd also note I particularly do like as well that the Transcend Jet Flash 810. It is a lot faster than the, the Corsair Drive I've been using for years and years, which uh, hasn't been a bit of a surprise to me. So I'll certainly be using more Jet Flash 810 drives. They are cheaper than the Gorilla Drive. And finally, I'd note that uh, the Survivor from Corsair, it is a nice drive, but I think it's a bit over-engineered. Unless you need this very, very, very rugged aluminium shell, this is a very heavy drive to put in your pocket. It probably will wear holes in your pocket rather rapidly. So there we are. Now I'm sure some of you are saying, Chris, why do you need USB drives in 2019? Surely all your file transfers are over the internet. And a lot of file transfers are over the internet. But I still find there are many occasions where it's important to be able to store data and transfer data on a USB drive. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.